Christmas is cold. <laughs> Pastor Troy and Pastor Jennifer here coming Woo! to you from beautiful, cold South Dakota. Woo! And uh, yes. Uh, <laughs> it's snowing, it if is. you cannot tell. It is. It is. It's beautiful right now. We just wanted to wish you and your family a Merry Christmas. And uh, we have a great experience planned for you today. We're doing Christmas around the world at GC. Yes, it's going to be fun, and uh, we're cold right now, but you're in your warm houses in California or wherever you're watching from, and uh, we're going to have a great time today. We're going to have some songs, some music. Uh, we are going to go around the world to what is Christmas like in Myanmar as wow. well as Mexico. Yeah. San Diego is going to be entertaining, uh, as well as just I'll be back later just to share a brief message and our Christmas story with you guys. And so thank you for joining us on Christmas Day with our family, with all of the Generations Church family of all the locations around the world. Thank you so much for being with us. It's cold. <laughs> it's like nine degrees negative. 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 Neg negative, nine. negative nine degrees. Negative I got that nine. with a wind chill factor of uh, negative like thirty or something yeah, like yeah. that. So, uh, so uh, enjoy the experience we have for you on this Christmas day. Enjoy your families and thank you so much for being with us. Here we go.
Regency Family, family. Uh, feliz, feliz Navidad, Navidad from Mexico. We're here to share a little bit of how we celebrate Christmas in Mexico. We have lots of traditions. Uh, we don't have one Christmas day. We have lots of, of days, a lot of celebrations. A lot, yeah, lots of celebrations and food. Yes, yeah, since Mexico is a majority of the people are Catholic, so Christmas is very important. Yes, uh, and it, uh, we start in the 16th. The 16th is a pre-Christmas celebrations. We start with posadas. Posadas, yes. So we have a posada every day. Yes. Until the 24th. So what posadas are, are typically a representation of Joseph and Mary. No uh, kin. Going to uh -huh, to Bethlehem and when they're looking for a place yeah, but to it's, stay. It's like, kind of like a play and the, the whole neighborhood, sometimes the whole town gets together. There's, and there's they walk up, around the town around. with candles and yeah. singing and they have to sing this particular song yeah and then asking and um, they knock on the door and then they're asking for, for a place to stay and they say no there's no room in the inn so they close the door and they have to keep walking until oh. they get to the designated house and that's remember this is the 16th they start the 16th and then get to the house and there, there's food there's a party tons of food we have lots of food uh, basically mexico has uh, all kinds of foods because it's a big country but in christmas we have fish yes fish you hear it right first we have bacalao and it's not good and it smells bad and no kids like those things <laughs> yeah but in posadas they have um tamales, Ponche, tamales buñuelos, which is the, the dessert yeah and all kinds of food and drinks so every night it's a different house is designated as the party house yeah, and it's a <laughs> celebration and then you're going to learn something new today about piñatas piñatas were created in christmas during oh, yes. christmas time every and they posada have a, has and they a, have a meaning yes every posada has a piñata and the piñata has to be uh the seventh point star yes that's the traditional christmas piñata what do they mean and represent? some people say it represents the star that led the wise men to Jesus. Others say that each point represents the seven deadly sins. Yes, and then you have the stick. And you have the stick we that you hit the piñata with. That represents virtue that helps you with the temptation. And then so you're you blindfolded. Hit. And you're supposed to blindfold the people. Yeah. And, the, and you're blindfolded because it represents that faith is blind. Exactly. So one other, other big big uh, um, thing we have, it's nativity scenes. Nativity scenes, they're bigger than Christmas trees. Yeah, yeah well, Christmas trees are has... new, they're probably 15 years ago we started having Christmas trees, but nativity scenes are that thing, and, and the bigger the better, and uh, you have to outdo your neighbor, outdo yes. the town next, next to you. Yes, everywhere you see nativity scenes, in the malls, even yeah. in government offices. Everywhere. Ev they're everywhere. And uh, sometimes uh, the people, they have like live scenes, like with live animals. It's, it is crazy. Yeah, the, the interesting point here is that the baby Jesus is not placed in the manger until the 24th. Yes. Because he's not born yet. And then they, <laughs> they don't even put the, the wise man until and some the, people, the 6th, yeah. uh, the January 6th. Okay. And then we have Pastorella. That's the 24th. So we have 16 to the 24th. We have the Posadas. And then the pastorela on the 24th. Pastorelas, yeah. They have them like in school sometimes. Yeah. And they are plays that represent the nativity. Yeah, but uh, the, the whole town goes to church. You know, because remember, everybody's Catholic. They go to church and they have the big old pasa, pastorela. Pastorela, the big old Christmas play where it's and like it's they go big. all out. They all out. It's big and then it, it, it's not like 20 minutes. It's like two hours and they sing and they have characters and customs and they have even the devil yeah they even have the devil represent there that they're they're trying to put obstacles of in front of the shepherd so they won't get to jesus but yeah, so the angels come down and help them and they yeah, overcome and that's it, funny and that's funny <laughs> uh and then after that um we have christmas eve we don't celebrate christmas on christmas day on the 25th on, no. on the 25th we have christmas eve and the whole family gathers around grandma, grandma house and um and they eat it, it's a dinner <laughs> yeah it's the 24th at night yeah and they'll have traditionally turkey or fish like he mentioned earlier in the mo you know the southern parts of mexico uh but tamales pozole every family has their own traditional yeah. and dishes everybody that brings desserts yeah desserts desserts that's desserts that's the main big. thing that you, you have both desserts and then uh the and kids don't get gifts from Santa or Reyes Magos, the, 20, the 24th, 
they get gifts from par parents. From, from yeah, from, from their family members. Uh, and they open their gifts at midnight. Yeah, they have to wait till midnight to open the gifts. And uh, and then the next day is like Thanksgiving in the States. Everybody stays. People leftovers. Travel, lots of leftovers. Lots of food. Another party. <laughs> Another party. Uh, <laughs> but uh, kids, they, they get their gifts on January the, 6th. January 6th is very important for kids because that's when they get their gifts. We don't have Santa. And there's no, yeah, Santa is kind of new. Yeah. But traditionally, um, it's Reyes, Reyes Magos. Magos, the wise men that bring, you know, gifts, just like they brought gifts to Jesus. Yeah. And I remember Soko uh, when I was a kid. Uh, you write your, your letter to Santa, to, to Reyes Magos. Yes. And then you put your letter in a shoe. Yes, you're supposed to put the, sh the letter in the shoe yeah. and you place the shoe by the door or by a window. Yes, and if you were good, you get your gift. You get presents. If not? If you weren't good, you got a lump of coal. Yeah. Inside your shoe. Yeah, Mexican fairs <laughs> are brutal, so. <laughs> So I used no to get kids. money in my shoe. <laughs> well, you have a <laughs> American fan, so that doesn't count. But but this is the important part, you know, Mexicans. Last minute thing. You know? So the kids is writing in the afternoon the letter to Reyes Magos, and then the parents put the kids to sleep. The fifth, okay, the gifts are going to be the, the sixth the in, the, sixth in, in the, the morning. morning. So parents leave their houses. Okay. So everybody is shopping at night. Shopping at night, midnight. Like at 10, and 11. there's big old markets, you know, in the town. Big old markets and you go and you grab if 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 you if your dad loves you and he has the money then you get what you ask for. But if not you get whatever is left. Whatever is left, yes. So <laughs> it's good to have a toy store on yeah. the fifth. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, and then the sixth, uh, after that we have champurado with roscas. Yes, yeah, so the fifth the kids wake up and they get their presents. And there's also the traditional rosca, yes, which is a like bread. a bread, like a round yeah. bread, uh, like a wreath, kind of. Yeah, and then you cut, and then if you get, it has little baby Jesus through the bread. Yeah, they have, a, I don't know, depending on how big the yeah. rosca is. And then it, what happens if you get that? And if your slice has the baby Jesus, that means you have to provide the tamales. For February On February 2nd. Yes, yeah, so okay, there's so another we, party. Yeah, we start December 16th. Christmas and we we finished on February second, so that's the, the the longest Christmas time ever in the world. So, <laughs> so there's a little bit of what we do, how we celebrate Christmas here in Mexico. Now you know if if you see chubby Mexicans around this time, it's because we eat. <laughs> we, we start celebrate. eating from the 16th of December. <laughs> yes, but well, uh, we we're so happy to be belong to this family. We're so happy to share uh, how we celebrate Christmas here in Mexico. And uh, now you know a little bit more of Mexico, and uh, probably next time you're, you're, you're going to come at 16 and spend uh, two months. Some posadas uh, with us. In Mexico, two, two months and a half eating, eating food. So, well, we love you guys and have a Merry Christmas. See you. Soon. See you soon. <laughs>
And thank you all for joining us online. This is Pastor Santa, enjoying beautiful San Diego here at GC San Diego. I want to take a moment to thank all of our partners. You guys have made it happen, continually sowing into the kingdom of God and spreading the greatest message of all, the message of Jesus Christ. And with that being said, we want to encourage you to sow and to give and to continually support the vision that God has given us here at GC. With that being said, I'm going to pass it on to my favorite assistant, Pastor Alf. How do we do this? Thank you, Pastor Santa. Hey, everybody. I'm Pastor Alf, and I want to thank you guys, just as Pastor Santa said, for everything you guys done in this past year of giving. And if you're ready to give, we have a couple different ways here in Generation Church how we give. One is online by going to generationchurch.tv, click the giving tab, fill out your info, bam, on its way. Two is by text to give. You can text any amount to 84321, follow the giving prompts, simple, easy, get that out of the way so you can enjoy the rest of the year. The last and easiest way we have is by a church center app. Download the church center app on any platform, fill out your information, safe, secure, send your giving on its way, enjoy the new year, and then we together, we can say cheers. Thank you guys for everything you guys do for Generation Church. Cheers. Salud.
Hey, Merry Christmas again, everybody. Uh, Pastor Troy with you. What an uh, amazing time we've had in Mexico and San Diego and all the different places around the world. Some great music. Uh, as I, we are in South Dakota, I thought what a great opportunity to make the story of Christmas and baby Jesus being born a little bit more of a reality as I'm currently standing in the barn or what would be referred to as a manger uh, here in South Dakota, my dad's barn. Uh, over here to my left is where we feed the horses or the cows or whatever. This would be what they would have called a manger where the hay was. This is where baby Jesus uh, was laid in a manger. It's where the calves or the cows or the sheep would eat their hay. Uh, Every Christmas morning, our family has had a tradition of reading the Christmas story. And I thought it being Christmas Day, I would just read the Christmas story to you guys. And there's a couple things we want to extract today and take from it. Uh, this will be a quick little fun little message today, of course. But uh, thanks so much again for listening. It picks up in Luke chapter 2 and verse 1. And I got my gloves on because it's freezing right now. But... Um, when I have to scroll, I'll have to take my gloves off. And it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This census took place while Quirinius, Quirinius was governing Syria. So all went to be registered, everyone to his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea, the city of David, which is called Bethlehem because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife, who was with child. So it was that while they were there, the days were completed for her to be, de for her to be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be the sign to you, you will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger." And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. So it was when the angels had gone away from them into heaven that the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. Now when they had seen him, they made widely known the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all those who heard it marveled at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen, and it was told of them. So this is the story of the birth of Jesus, and we find that the very first individuals in all of that day and time that God showed or revealed was these shepherds, shepherds that were out tending their sheep. Why did God pick shepherds to be the very first ones? As a matter of fact, there were actually two types of people that God revealed the very first time, the ones he told the, the first time. First was the shepherds. They were the ones closest. They were the ones out in the fields. And the second one we actually talked about last Sunday, March or uh, December 18th, where I talked about how the three wise men traveled from afar. We find that story in Matthew chapter 2, and we referenced that story last week. But they saw a star in the sky. And the wise men traveled from the east. We don't really know how far, but we do know it was a far, far away. Because if you notice in the story we just read, the shepherds found the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes. But when the wise men arrived at the same exact place in Bethlehem at the manger, they found that the 
child was now, a young child, the Bible references in Matthew chapter 2. So the first ones were shepherds who were close by. The second people that God revealed this to were people from the east who had to travel a long ways because by the time they got there, Jesus, the Bible references, was a small child. I think it's interesting and something we can take home on this Christmas morning that God would reach all people. First of all, some people that weren't well off were shepherds. They tended sheep. They were the closest, and they came and they worshiped Jesus. But then at the same time, the Bible references that wise men from the east who had to travel a long ways, but when they came, they were able to bring a blessing to Joseph and Mary and Jesus by bringing gold, frankincense, and myrrh, three types of gifts that were brought. So God, from the very beginning, through the birth of His Son, was reaching all classes of people. He was reaching shepherds, taking care of sheep, and He was reaching astrologers or wise men who had wealth and finances, and they both were told of Jesus being born, and they both followed until they found the baby Jesus. I think it's interesting in the day and time that we live in, and all through the times of Jesus, as He was grown into a young man, that He would always try to reach all different aspects of people. And on this Christmas season, no matter where we are, how we're doing, God is reaching and saying, hey, I sent Jesus my son on this Christmas day for you as well. And so on this Christmas day, as we gather with our families, we reference the story of Jesus and how he was born in the manger at one of the lowliest places. Here we are in this barn in my dad's ranch in South Dakota. It would look something like this. There would be animals here and the smell of animals and hay on the ground in a manger. And it probably wasn't very warm then either. And this is where baby Jesus was born, in a manger just like this barn. But yet he was elevated to the Savior of the world. Let's just remember on this Christmas day, even though we've probably, most of us already unwrapped our gifts and we've already begun to reference the jewelry or the clothing or the toys or the video games that we maybe receive, let's just remember that the greatest gift of all that was brought to the world was Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world. Can I just pray with you all this morning? Uh, And if you've never received Jesus, if you're watching and never uh, received Him as Lord and Savior, He goes after everyone and He came and died for all to receive Jesus. Would you just pray with me right there where you're watching? Father, I just pray right now in Jesus' name. We thank you, Father God, for your son, Jesus, that we celebrate the birth of him, the Savior of the world on this Christmas day. And I just pray for people that are watching right now, Father God. I thank you that your uh, saving knowledge hits their heart, that they understand the Savior of the world is Jesus. And Lord, I just pray right now for those that are in need today that you comfort them, that your Holy Spirit uh, surrounds them, brings them peace today. Father, I pray for every family, every family member. We pray for healing, Father God, in Jesus' name. We thank you, Father God, that you not only brought salvation, but you brought a whole benefit package with Jesus. And so, Lord, I thank you for those today that would call upon Jesus as Savior and Lord. And we thank you for this season that we've come to. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We just want to thank all of you for being with us on this great Christmas special, this great Christmas day. It is freezing here. Our fingers are falling off. You can probably see the breath coming out of my mouth, but we love you guys. We're so excited for 2023. And don't remember to join, please remember to join us on January 1st, next Sunday at 1030 at our Moreno Valley location, 1030 at our San Diego location, 11 a.m. at our Tijuana location online as well and at 12:30 for Espanol and Moreno Valley and we're excited for him at San Jacinto launching sometime in 2023 this year grand opening uh, thank you for all of you we love you guys bless you and have a very Merry Christmas